Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. Not an ordinary differential equation. Well, it's kind of ordinary, but not ordinary in a different sense. It's a golden differential equation. Why do we call it a golden differential equation? We're going to find out in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. We have an interesting situation, so that's kind of interesting. We have the derivative of y being added to the function itself, and then it gives us the second derivative. So it's kind of fairly interesting, and you can kind of think about it this way. We know that the derivative of e to the power x is the same thing, so can this be like e to the power x? Obviously, when you plug in e to the power x, and we're just experimenting here, you'll notice that first derivative is e to the power x and second derivative is e to the power x. When we add the derivative and the function, the sum is going to give us 2e to the power x. Unfortunately, that's not going to equal the second derivative. We're pretty close though, right? So the, this kind of tells you the answer is probably something that looks like e to the power, but that's not guaranteed. We're going to find out. Could it also be a trigonometric function, right? Maybe it's going to be sine of x. When you take the first derivative of sine, it, you're going to get cosine. And the second derivative is going to give you negative sine. When you add the function and the second derivative, well, actually, I'm not adding it correctly. Function and the first derivative, that gives you sine x plus cosine x, which does not equal the second derivative. So sine x is not going to work. Similarly, cosine x is not going to work. Tangent x is not going to work. Obviously, we can't try all these different functions. There are infinitely many functions, right, that you can write. So let's go ahead and solve this problem in a more systematic way. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything on the same side. And I'm going to show you a method which uses kind of like differential operators, or some people call it, I think, differentiation operators, whatever. So we put everything on the same side, and now we're going to think about it this way. So a differentiation operator was applied to y, first the second derivative, and then the first, and then the function itself. So what does that look like? If d, the capital D, is our differentiation operator, then it kind of looks like the following. And differentiation operators are interesting because there are certain rules that govern them, like if you have e to the power x times a function, and if you're trying to d it, like differentiate it, then you can kind of use certain rules. Anyways, that's a different story. So, but we can write this as d squared minus d minus 1 times, sort of like, a, it's not times, but it's kind of operating on the y, and that is equal to 0. Cool. This is homogeneous, so it's easy to solve because we have 0 on the right-hand side. But notice that inside the parentheses, we kind of have like a quadratic equation-ish thing. And this actually turns into a characteristic equation, which we can write as r squared minus r minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, if you solve this equation, you're going to notice that you're going to get golden ratio as one of the solutions. That's why I call this a golden differential equation. So, the roots are 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, which I'm going to call r1. And r2 is going to be 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. Now, if you have r1 and r2 for a differential equation as characteristic roots, then you can basically write the solution as c1, which is a constant, times e to the power, not r1, e to the power r1x, and plus c2, e to the power r2x. Here, r2 and r1 are the roots of the characteristic equation. c1 and c2 are constants. Okay? So, this is how we can write the solution. Since r1 and r2 are known, let's go ahead and substitute them. So, we get the solution as c1 times e to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2 multiplied by x plus c2 e to the power 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 multiplied by x. Obviously, that's kind of like a general solution. You can replace c1 and c2 with any real number you want, and you're going to get, obviously, different solutions every time. What happens if c1 and c2 are both equal to 0? Then we get y equals 0 as a solution, and that's actually also true because if you think about this, like, you know, you have a function uh, who is a constant, 0, its second derivative is 0, everything is 0, and the answer is also going to be 0. So y equals 0 definitely satisfies, but that's just one of the solutions. If you replace c1 and c2 with certain numbers, 
you're going to notice that uh, you'll, you'll be getting some solutions. For example, take C1 equals 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, this case. C1 is 1 and C2 is 0. And that gives us Y equals e to the power 1 plus root 5 over 2 times x. You can go ahead and differentiate this once. You're going to get obviously the constant because the derivative of kx is k. So that times the same thing, right? And then you differentiate it one more time. And then you're going to get the same thing again. So that's just going to be squared. And you're going to get the same power of e, right? And now if you go ahead and add the first uh, derivative and the function itself, you're going to basically be getting uh, something similar because the constants are just going to be there and it'll work. Make sense? Okay. This brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.